Hi, and welcome to the MSU Denver Aviation Aerospace Department video series. My name is Emily Dolezal, and I'm the Aviation Aerospace Academic Advisor. And I'm Chad Kendall, Professor of Aviation and Aerospace Science. Today, we're talking with Professor Tyler Batchelder, a Professor of Aviation Aerospace Science in our program here at MSU Denver. We'll be providing an overview of the bachelor's degree in aviation aerospace science with a professional officer concentration and discussing the specifics of flight training in our program. So for the basics of any bachelor's degree, you need a minimum of 120 credit hours. The way that the professional flight officer curriculum is built is that about a quarter of those credit hours are uh, general studies courses. So those are going to be the courses that every single student around the university takes, English, math, history, that sort of thing. The huge bulk of those credit hours is going to be your professional flight officer courses, including some flight courses we'll cover. And then you'll have a few free elective credit hours to make up that collective 120. Tyler, welcome. Please tell us about your background, what courses you teach here at MSU Denver, and other areas of the program for which you're responsible. Hello, and thank you for inviting me for this video series. My name is Tyler Batchelder, and I am one of our associate professors here in the Aviation and Aerospace Science Department. I've been with Metro State for about 11 years now, started out as a part-time affiliate faculty member, and I've been a full-time faculty member for the last six years now. Prior to coming to Metro, I've spent some time in industry. I've been flying for about two, uh, 20 years now. Uh, I also worked at Jeppesen prior to coming here in the Approach Airport Charting Department. So uh, I've been in industry uh, with the instrument side of things for quite a while. Some of the classes I teach here at Metro are largely technical in nature. So a lot of our ground school classes, the private, the instrument, the commercial ground school classes, uh, the weather class, the flight instructor ground class, many of our simulator classes, some of our navigation classes. I've taught just about a little of everything here at Metro. I'm also our assistant chief ground instructor for our 141 program. So I help Professor Kendall with uh, our FAA requirements, our record keeping, and making sure all of our classes are meeting the appropriate records and meeting the FAA requirements. Tyler, we're glad to have you, and we know you do a lot of advising. Some of the responsibilities that you have as a professor is to advise incoming students and current students in our program. Uh, what would you say to families and students as they are uh, just getting started uh, to, in general, about our flight program and flight students and some of the keys to success of being in our program? Absolutely. This video is a great start to give you a good overview of what you're going to be doing and what is expected of our program. But beyond that, talk with an advisor. All of our full time faculty members in the Aviation Aerospace Science Department are advisors. We also have dedicated advisors like Emily. Um, so schedule an appointment. I suggest to every student to schedule an appointment every semester. Even if you have a good idea of what you're going to be doing, uh, what your career path looks like, it doesn't hurt to meet with an advisor just for a few minutes so we can validate that the classes you're taking are actually going to help towards your degree. What I also suggest to all students is start your flight training as soon as possible. If you're going to come in semester number one, you're going to be taking our private pilot ground school class. Along with that, we expect you to be doing your flight training at a local airport along with that ground school class. Don't delay that flight training. If you put that flight training off until later on, uh, all you're gonna do is forget about the information that you've been taught in that ground school class. And it's gonna lead to extra cost, extra time, and extra studying on your part when you finally get around to that flight training. Not starting your flight training is also gonna hold up your degree progress. You're not gonna be able to continue on to other certificates and ratings within the program unless you finish your private uh, first and then move on to your instrument commercial, whatever it may be. So start that flight training right away, even before you come to Metro, you can start that flight training and come in with some experience into our program. Once you're in college, you have a lot more flexibility than you may have had in high school or other training programs. That's really nice, but it can also be tempting to not come to class, to skip class. Don't fall in that trap. Uh, this is going to be your career, something you should be excited about, something you want to do for the rest of your life. Come to class. Take advantage of the time that you get one-on-one -on -one with your professors, with your fellow students, learning the material. Be motivated and excited to be here. Use the resources we have available within the department, not only from the classroom, but we have a lot of other simulator resources available to you. So 
if you're not here, you can't take advantage of that. And it's going to make your career progression a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Fantastic information, Tyler. A unique program that we have where students are coming in either with no experience or maybe just their private pilot's license and starting out in the program, beginning flight training as soon as they start the program with us. And like you said, important for students that first semester to be in ground school and other aviation classes and flight training at the same time. Just to expand a bit on the flight training side, Tyler, can you go into the options that students have for where to do flight training and what the FAA and different regulations are out there for the types of flight training? Absolutely. Like you said, we have a very unique flight training program that, that gives our students a lot more flexibility than other programs throughout the country. Our students can train uh, under FAA Part 61 or FAA Part 141. You have completed another great video uh, on that topic, so I won't go into too much detail with that, but uh, basically Part 61 is going to the local airport, finding a flight school, finding a flight instructor you're comfortable with, completing your flight training one-on-one -on -one with them, earning your certificates and ratings along the way. Part 141 is what we are approved for here at Metro State. We have a couple training providers or uh, we have uh, training providers in the Denver area that you can do your flight training with. Now going the 141 route has some advantages if your career progression is going to be the airlines. Specifically, you can go work for the airlines at 1,000 hours instead of 1,500 hours total time. So you'll get to the airlines a little bit sooner. You can start building that seniority number, start flying some really cool airplanes from there. Now, if you don't want to fly with one of our training providers, it's not convenient for you, or you have a flight school you like a little bit more, you can go the Part 61 route just fine. The only difference there is you're going to start flying for the airlines at 1,500 hours. So anticipate spending a little bit more time as a flight instructor, teaching the next generation of pilots. There's plenty of other routes you can go to build flight time as well. So you don't have to continue to be a flight instructor if you don't want to, but uh, those are some options. Also, we suggest for students coming in, along with that flight training, get your medical certificate done before you really get too far in the program or your flight training. There's three different levels of medical certificates that you, are, uh, you can get, first, second, and third class. You will eventually need a first class medical if you want to fly professionally, either corporate, commercial, um, go ahead and get that now, get it out of the way. Usually that medical application and the physical go just fine. Periodically, there are some issues identified that may require some additional approval by the FAA or might even result in a denial of that medical. You wanna learn about that before you spend a lot of money on tuition going through a program or on flight training as well. So knock that out. If you're under 40 years of age, that medical is good for you for five years. So you'll be able to use it through most of your college career with us as well. Get it done early so you know that there's no surprises waiting for you. Yeah, thank you. Chad, can you explain the sequencing of FAA flight certif certifications that are required in our degree program and the ground schools that go alongside those flight certs? Absolutely. So we have students that come into our program every semester that have had no flight training whatsoever. And so we work with students, like Tyler said, on making a decision on where to do flight training at, what type of flight training uh, that that student wants to do. And so for our degree program, in addition to meeting the degree requirements like you talked about, Emily, of 120 credit hours, general studies classes, all the uh, special aviation classes that we have in our program, students are getting their pilot's licenses as they go through. So student who comes in with no flight experience, they're going to begin with their private pilot certificate. Then they're going to get their instrument rating. After their instrument rating, they're going to get their commercial single engine rating. And with our curriculum requirements, students have an option after the, uh, after the commercial single engine. You can either get your certified flight instructor certificate or your multi-engine add-on. A lot of advantages and disadvantages for what to do uh, and what sequence to take. We want to make sure that you take the right sequence because for most of those licenses, there is a ground school. So for private pilot flight training, we have a private pilot ground school. It's called Aviation Fundamentals. And so we want to make sure that students are in the correct ground school with their flight training and that they're doing that concurrently. And as Tyler talked about, meet with an advisor. You know, even though that these are our degree requir requirements, uh, we want to make sure students are set up for success outside of the program. And so 
That may be going beyond the degree requirement and getting both the CFI and the multi-engine add-on, or also adding ground instructor certificates. So there's basic degree requirements, and then there's how to make you more marketable in the aviation world. And Tyler, what about the FAA evaluation process with our ground schools and flight training? Yeah, so we're going to evaluate our students at a couple levels. Uh, for starters, we're going to evaluate you here at Metro State. Uh, as Professor Kendall said, there's a ground school component to all those certificates and ratings. Our ground schools are, are all FAA 141 um, approved. As part of that, you'll have traditional uh, homework assignments and quizzes like you would for any collegiate level class. We also have stage exams periodically through all those courses, anywhere from three to four stage exams, depending on the particular course that it is. And then we have a final exam at the end. Now, for our FAA approval, those stage exams require a minimum passing score of 70% to demonstrate that you understand the knowledge that we've given you. The final exam, we hold you to a slightly higher standard of 80% on those. If you don't score 70 or 80%, then we'll retake stage exams as necessary to bring those up to the standard, ensure you're acceptable to move on with those. Outside of the Metro State requirements, the FAA also wants to evaluate pilot applicants to make sure they meet the industry standards. That's going to start out with your FAA written exam. Our ground school classes are specifically meant to prepare you for that exam. Once you complete our class satisfactorily, meet all of our requirements, you will be given, given a graduation certificate, which will serve as your endorsement or approval to go to a testing center and take that test. It's 60 questions, you get about two and a half hours to complete it. The FAA also requires a 70% minimum score to pass that. Once you finish our course, you finish your written exam, you've been doing your flight training all along the way with periodic stage exams throughout there, you're ready for your practical test. This is essentially like a driver's license test, you're going to meet with a designated FAA examiner. They are going to ask you questions to gauge your knowledge level of the certificate or rating that you are applying for. That is our, the oral portion. It's generally done on the ground, usually an hour or two, maybe a little bit more. Once you're done with that portion, you're going to get in an airplane with that examiner and you're going to go demonstrate all of the flight training maneuvers and procedures that your flight instructor has taught you. Once that practical exam is done, then you'll get your temporary pilot certificate. And a couple weeks later, you'll get a permanent one in the mail. And then you'll move on for additional certificates and ratings as Professor, Professor Kendall talked about. Nice, thank you. So this program in particular is a big time and money commitment, especially maybe compared to some other degrees offered at MSU Denver. Um, Tyler, what are some cost and time saving um, tips and tricks that students can do to make sure that they take full advantage and do it strategically and efficiently. Yeah, this is a huge part of flight training and a huge part of our program as well. Um, right away, keep in mind that the, the FAA sets a minimum number of hours. For example, at a private pilot level, if you're going part 61, it's 40 hours. If you're going through a 141 partner school of ours, it's 35 hours. Keep in mind that those are minimum times only. A lot of the airports we have in the area are some of the busiest airports in the country. So unfortunately you spend a little bit of time taxiing and waiting for takeoff, waiting for landing, waiting to cross runways, things like that. So we inevitably see those numbers go a little bit higher. Um, it's to be expected anywhere from 60 to 80 hours for a private pilot certificate is not uncommon. So understand that. And if you are working with a flight training school um, and they have marketing material in terms of cost and times. Keep in mind that those are averages or minimums. You may be above or below that a little bit. So have some flexibility there. Once you are flight training, my biggest suggestion is block out time in your schedule to fly at least two times a week, if not three. Three would be probably ideal. My suggestion is to build that into your class and your work schedule. Don't try and pick times throughout the week to fly. Leave yourself a dedicated block that you know that is when you are going to fly. If you fly less than that, what you kind of end up doing is reviewing a lot of information at your next flight lesson. You'll forget a little bit, you'll get a little bit rusty on your motor skills, and so you'll spend a little bit more time reviewing. Whereas if you fly two to three times a week, you can progress a little bit faster because you remembered the last lesson a little bit more. It's a great way to save money in the long run as well and reduce your total time. 
Well, along with, you know, the advice I gave earlier, come prepared to your flight lessons, come prepared to your ground lessons here. Uh, if you can come prepared having readings or assignments done, even practicing some of those maneuvers in your sim lab classes that we have here at Metro, or even on a home-based flight computer, if you have one available, that's gonna help speed up your flight training. You're gonna spend less time with your flight instructor, less time in the airplane, and that's gonna save you money in the long run as well. Nice, thank you. Chad, any additional thoughts for students on keys to success and thinking beyond just the flying? Tyler did a fantastic job going through that entire list. And, you know, again, I, I think it goes back to what Tyler said, working with an advisor to kind of come up with a game plan. You know, that's what I talk about to every freshman class is, is coming up with a game plan, having a game plan on where you're going to do flight training at, having a game plan based off of uh, your, uh, your schedule with your family, schedule with working part-time, working full-time, uh, and like Tyler said, fly, flying two to three days, uh, two to three times a week uh, helps in the program. Uh, you are going to spend more money if you're not able to kind of meet that mark. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we work with students to be able to get to that uh, to that time commitment for the program because you want to work through getting all your licenses as quickly as possible. Uh, hopefully putting yourself at a position where you're done with your licenses uh, before you're done with the rest of your degree requirements. Uh, and so it is a big time commitment. It is a big financial commitment. We're going to have a, uh, we have a video on financial aid and financial assistance. Uh, and we'd like to work with every student uh, to talk about uh, how to best fit with their schedule, uh, putting flying in with their academics. Flying is a skill uh, and you need to be doing that skill often in order to succeed through that. Thank you. Yeah. Tyler, can you talk about some of the career paths that students can do when they get our professional flight officer concentration? Absolutely. Throughout this video, we've kind of emphasized the airline route a little bit. That's where the majority of our students are interested in going, but it's certainly not the only route. Um, you're going to start your professional career as a flight instructor, and there are plenty of people who just continue to be a flight instructor. They enjoy teaching. Um, they enjoy that variability of flight instructing a little bit more, so that could be a career path. There's also military options. If you're interested in serving the country and flying some really cool stuff for the military, there are those options there as well. Obviously, the airline route, if you're interested in flying for some of the regional carriers, then eventually moving on to some of our legacy carriers. But there's also the corporate or charter route. These pilots are doing a little bit more private flying, still some really cool jets available out there, but they're flying into smaller airports for more private clientele. And of course, building time, you know, if, you're, if your goal is to go to the airlines, but you're not excited about the charter, the corporate, the flight instructing route, uh, we have some opportunities in the Denver area here, things like aerial survey, flying around, taking pictures of various things on the ground, um, doing parachute jumping operations. We have a couple outfits within Colorado, so you can be a jump pilot going up and down all day, taking uh, parachutists around. Things like glider towing or banner towing are also options within the area. So there's plenty of different ways to build your flight time. And again, I'll emphasize meet with an advisor, meet with one of our faculty members to discuss what your career plans are and some of the different options you have available to build time that might be a little bit outside of the box. Nice. Thank you. And so, yeah, as Tyler mentioned, every student's path to their career is different. Um, every single one of us is here to help you accomplish your professional and personal goals. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions about how you can be successful in this degree plan and also in your chosen career path. We hope this video answered most of your questions about the flight program at MSU Denver. If you have additional questions, please reach out. Our contact information is below. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in our program soon.